bloody in my picture. <laughs> Good. All right, welcome back to our session tonight, uh, Cultivating Connections. I'm Amanda Brosnana Rios, and I am the Communications Director for National Grange. Um, tonight, I am joined by Ryan Orton and Nicole. It's not Ripley anymore, and I cannot oh, forget. Myers. <laughs> Myers. Thank you. And Nicole Myers, who are both at subordinate Grange levels, uh, working in their communities to do something really amazing and that is both have installed food pantries um, over the past couple months. And so I've brought them here with us tonight to talk a little bit about uh, why, how, how you can, um, and what else they're doing to reach out to their community. So hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi, Ryan. Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing very well, thank you. Ryan, I think that you're probably uh, exhausted. It sounds to me like you had a long day because you were before this doing a free community supper, right? Correct. Our Grange voted to give a free spaghetti and meatball dinner for residents of the town of Stanford in Dutchess County, New York, and also residents for the Pine Plain Central School District, which is our local school district, to help them through this pandemic. Uh, we know that there are several people in our school district and our town who need some food, and we rose to the occasion. One of our Grange families donated the money to pay for all the supplies, the food, uh, everything was covered by this donation by a family. And then we had six members here at our hall today, including myself, uh, cooking, prepping, getting ready for the dinner, and we got rid of all 100 dinners tonight, which is amazing. We're very, very grateful for the support of the community, grateful for the support of this family. And we are tired after that work today, but it's a good tired. I bet. Um, Nicole, this is, uh, you guys do some community dinners as well in, in your Grange, right? Yeah, we haven't um, done any here in the last um, year. So we do, our sub sale is probably the biggest thing that we do. And again, like you had said earlier, we look at it more as a fundraiser, but um, every time we do it, we always have people that are like, I can't even believe that's all you're charging for your subs. Um, so it's, you know, you just gotta look at it a different way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of this is about food security. Um, as much as raising our own profile and fulfilling that part of the closing charge that says, you know, feeding the fatherless and the widows, but that I think, you know, we're all coming to the conclusion that some of the language may be a little antiquated, but the idea is the same. So, um, so I wanted to start off talking a little bit about your uh, food pantries and Ryan, I'm going to go first with Nicole only because if somebody's read the Good Day magazine, they already have a little sense of yours. So I'm going to introduce Nicole's first. Um, so Nicole, what, what grange are you part of and um, when did you guys install a food pantry? So I'm part of Linganore Grange in Maryland. We're in Frederick County. And we just did the food pantry probably a little over a month ago, um, maybe six weeks, you know, when all this kind of really blew up and got so crazy. Uh, and we just kind of were trying to figure out what it, what could we do to really help the community. We always do a food collection at all of our uh, bi-monthly meetings. And we take that to the food bank, which, you know, we still wanted to continue, but we're thinking you were hearing so much about all the kids that weren't going to school and they weren't getting their meals. And yeah, there's schools in our community that are, that are still offering the meals for pickup, but what about the families that don't have a way to get there? Um, and we were thinking about, you know, the, the kids that at families and kids that are right in our neighborhood where our hall is that they could, you know, even the kids could walk up the street a mile and, be able to access the pantry on the porch even if they can't they don't have someone to drive them to the schools or to drive them to the food bank where they have um, obviously a, a huge array of supplies um, but what could we do to make it more accessible for some of those people so that's how we kind of came about it and Ryan you guys um, actually came up with this idea last year already um, and implemented it just before COVID so can you tell me a little bit about, you know, how this came about for you guys as well? Sure. 
Last summer, I went to Marcellus Grange in New York State, which is near Syracuse, with Katie Fallon, past National Grange Outstanding Young Patron, and her mother, Teresa Fallon, New York State Grange Junior Deputy, for a visit. And we saw outside the Marcellus Grange Hall this little food pantry. It was literally a hutch from someone's kitchen that had food inside as long as as well as other non-perishables and personal items like toilet paper, towel paper, feminine products, uh, plastic wrap, canned goods. And we said to ourselves, this is a really neat idea. We should do this at our Grange because for us, we're in Dutchess County, New York. We're 90 miles north of New York City. And we have a lot of people in our community where we know that food is a problem and people need to get food. The nearest food pantry to us is the next town north, but it's only open once a month. The nearest place where they would serve food is at least a half an hour, 45 minutes away. So we wanted to do something here in our town to help those who needed food. So we brought the idea back to our Grange and we talked about it over several meetings, over several months, uh, check with our insurance company to make sure it was okay to do something like this and that our insurance would be covered uh, for the food pantry. And then thanks to community donations, we were able to obtain some kitchen hutches from people in town who donated them to us. People have been donating food to us several times a week. Uh, our town board is actually a new town board starting in January, one that is much more community oriented than the previous town board, one that really wants to create this idea of community unity in the town of Stanford. So they've been helping us advertise the food pantry. Our supervisor puts out a newsletter and she puts right on her newsletter that the Grange has a food pantry. Please consider donating food or sending monetary donations. Now we did start this food pantry just before the pandemic started without any clue that this was going to happen and people would be in such a dire need. We opened it in the middle of February and it has been an overwhelming success since then. And our, our usage has doubled and tripled since the pandemic started. I want to go back to that use in a few minutes, but um, Nicole, let me ask you, you guys did, You guys also have yours on your porch, so people are able to access it at whatever time is appropriate for them. Um, right. but how is yours constructed? Because we, we see in the Good Day magazine the picture of the hutches on their porch, uh, you know, and it's just kind of the standard kitchen uh, cabinetry type thing. How sure. is yours constructed? So we actually just um, built a box when we came up with the idea, we were trying to figure out what was the best way to do it, but how we wanted it to be able to be something that could sit on the porch where um, anybody could access it at any time. That being part of it that, you know, a lot of times there are people, and especially with what's going on, people don't necessarily want to ask for help. So this way it's on the porch, you know, we're not that far off the road. You can see it from the road. We put it on our sign out front. And if they need it, then they can stop in and they can grab it. And nobody necessarily even knows that they were there. Um, so we just built it out of a sheet of plywood. We come up with some dimensions. We didn't want to make it too big um, and have to worry about, you know, anything knocking it over or the wind or anything like that. So we did it. It's um, two foot tall, three feet wide, and we put a shelf in the middle and we just continuously restock it. It's been going really well. You know, it took a little while to get it going for people to really know that we had it there and available but after that um it's we've been we have a couple grangers that live you know next door or right down the street so they try to check on it for us regularly and then update us you know if they need stuff or whatnot so it's been getting restocked throughout the week and then as you know amanda i live right across the state line in pennsylvania but um, I'm usually down here on the weekend, so I try to make sure when I stop at the grocery store on the weekend, I grab some stuff, bring it down, and we refill it then. So it's been um, going well as far as – I hadn't really even thought about doing something like a hutch. That that sounds like it was a really a good idea. It worked well for that. Um, this seems to be working fine for us, but obviously if it was something that we needed a larger piece for, that would definitely be um, oh, something that we might look into. So I'm going to talk to both of you about a little bit about funding and restocking and what you keep in these in a minute. But um, I know that one of the questions that came up was how do you secure it? Neither of your granges are really in the middle of nowhere where you're worried about bears or raccoons or whatever jumping yeah. into it. Are you? 
No, uh, we are in the middle of our town. And right behind our grain trawl is the town athletic fields with baseball fields, soccer fields, that kind of thing. Um, so there's people around all the time, um, except for now during the pandemic. Uh, we actually joke here at our Grange, uh, right next door to our hall is a the town hardware store. And they have a pet chicken and a pet rooster named Fred and Ethel. And we say that, well, our food pantry is guarded by Fred and Ethel, the guard rooster and the guard chicken. So we don't have to worry about any sort of vandalism because they'll take care of it all. Um, but no, we've had no problems with vandalism or animals or anything like that. Not at all. And no, we haven't either. Um, we just put a latch on ours so that it's, you know, it's one of those you kind of have to slide and then slide down so that it really locks it essentially shut. So some, but nothing could get into it. That was the thing, trying to come up with some kind of latch that a dog couldn't walk up and just knock it open. Um, but we haven't had any issues either. So and I think that that's the thing. We always kind of op overcomplicate these things when you think about it too much because uh, you do want to be secure, but sometimes overthinking them just means we don't do some of the good work we could be doing. So that's good to hear that both of yours have been going for a little while now and neither of you had to have any issues. So um, Ryan, I'm going to go back to you for a minute. When you mentioned the uh, Grange, Marcellus Grange that you had visited and you saw a pantry, a porch pantry, um, that kind of inspired this, you had mentioned that it didn't just have food. Um, so could you talk a little bit about what you stock? Sure. We have the usual canned goods of vegetables, fruit, canned meat. Uh, we have mashed potatoes that are boxed. We have cookies. We have candy, uh, little fruit pies, coffee, that kind of stuff. But we also supply baby food. We supply household items like household cleaners when we can find them now, um, paper plates. We have a special section that's just for pets. We work with a local uh, organization called Animal Farm Foundation, and they supply us with dog food, cat food, fish food, and food for rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, mice, uh, you name it. They, they supply it for free. We've also made some connections with a local farm called Duchess Creamery, and they supply us with milk. We made connections with a local egg farmer who is a hobby farmer, and we have fresh eggs every week from this family. Uh, we also have feminine products, uh, stuff that the ladies might need um, to help them out with whatever they need. So um, it's more than just food. It's really things you would need in your everyday life. Nice. Nicole, um, is yours just food and what type of food or additional stuff as well? Sure. Um, right now we're just doing food since I, since I mentioned the dimensions were not that big. Um, I love the idea of all the different stuff and how you have other businesses in the community that are working with you to help supply it. Um, since we just got ours started, we really hadn't even thought about anything other than that. Today when I went out this, um, this morning to do some restocking, we did have some baby food that someone has put in. Um, we're not keeping track of who's putting it in. And obviously we have no way of knowing who's using it. And that's fine. That was the intention. But um, we all food, I'm trying to stick with things um, that are more securely packaged in the event that, you know, a mouse or something like that could get into it. Obviously we can't always stop that. So trying to keep things, um, we tried it. We've, we've found that breakfast goes well, pop tarts, cereal, uh, we've done oatmeal. A lot of the snacky stuff has gone more for us. Some canned stuff, it's not moving as much. Um, we did, you know, like SpaghettiOs and raviolis and that kind of stuff, as well as some canned vegetables, um, canned tuna. Um, again, it's going some, but not as much. So we've done like the individual applesauce cups, pudding cups, fruit cups, little things that are good for the kids, um, adults as well. But again, just thinking, you know, if it is kids that are looking for something, it kind of makes it easier for them that way. So it seems like the individually packed stuff goes better. Um, we do like sandwich crackers, the packs of, you know, peanut butter and um, peanut butter on the cheese crackers or that kind of stuff. Um, granola bars. I'm trying to think what else. Cookies. Um, I said crackers already. So just a lot more of the snacky stuff but keeping the other stuff in there, the canned goods and the more hearty items as well. So they're there, you know, if that is what somebody wants, it's just that hasn't been going for us as much. We found the same thing in New York that the snacky foods for the kids are going 
a lot quicker than a lot of other things because the kids are out of school. And yeah. since we have the town recreation park right behind our grain shawl, people can still use it as long as they social distance. Um, but kids are around and they need something to eat. Right. So um, let me go and talk a little bit about how you all afford to have this because some granges may argue that they have a very small treasury uh, you know that their their individuals are potentially food insecure or um, facing you know limited budgets because of, of uh, retirement funds or whatever. Um, so how have you guys made sure to to have this be successful by continuing to stock it through this crisis that's absolutely pumped demand? Um, Ryan, let me start with you. We've been very, very fortunate. Our Grange is one of those Granges that does have a very small treasury. Um, whatever money we get in usually goes right back out either in bills or in other community projects. Uh, because of the help of our town board and our town supervisor through her newsletters and through our Facebook page, we receive donations, financial donations from our community. And they mail it to either our master's house or to our Grange PO box. And that's really what has funded our food pantry is those donations from community members. Um, some as well as the partnerships have, that you guys created. It. Absolutely. And some people have been so generous since we are 90 miles from New York city and we are a, a bedroom community for New York city. Uh, some of our donations have been upwards of a thousand dollars at a time. So uh, we're very, very fortunate to live in such a giving community. That's awesome. Well, how about you guys? So since ours is still a lot newer um, and we, haven't obviously been able to have any Grange meetings to really like spread the word and work with people to see how we can come up with other options. We've just been really um, Grange members mostly filling it. Um, you know, we kind of just pass around the word like, hey, we did this. You know, if you're at the grocery store and you can do it, if you can afford it, if you can, it's totally fine. And you want to grab anything, drop it off at the Grange Hall. Feel free to, feel free to put it in the pantry when you're there. If you're not comfortable with that or if it's already full at the time, drop it on um, the, the porch on the back side where we enter the building. Since we have Grange members that are neighbors to our building, they have um, offered to keep an eye on it and check on it. If they see anybody dropping food off that can't fit in the box, then they're picking it up and taking it inside for us. Um, so it's it, the word since we've spread the word, you know, Facebook is huge. So a lot of our members have posted it on Facebook. We've posted it in different community groups. So it's gotten around. Um, and I know that we've had people in the community, as you said, that aren't Grange members say, you know, what do you need or what could, what works in there? What can I fill it with when I go by or when I go to the grocery store, I'll pick up something, drop it off on my way back. So again, we've been fortunate that we have members and other community members that have been filling it. I don't know that our need is quite as great as yours is Ryan um, from what it sounds, but we also don't have as large of a pantry. So it doesn't take us as much to fill it up. Um, so when you're thinking about what you're filling or you're getting things in, especially Ryan, I'm thinking about your partnership with the, the dairy farmer and with the uh, hobbyist chicken farmer. Um, do you worry at all about refrigeration? Are these things that you're thinking about doing expansions on in another few months as it gets warmer? And I'm going to ask you, Nicole, the same about expansions in a minute. Uh, when we first started, we only had one hutch outside and we've had to expand it to two since the pandemic started. So we have expanded and one of our Grange families, another Grange family donated a small refrigerator for us to use. So we have one outside the, near the hutches that does have the eggs, the milk, some bread donated by uh, our farmer's market, which is two doors down from us, um, as well as any homemade things that might be given. Um, we do have a cooler inside our Grange Hall where we store all the food for the food pantry, which holds any overstock. Nicole, I mean, this is just getting off the ground for you guys. And as you mentioned, you haven't even kind of had a Grange meeting under your belt to talk okay. more about this. Um, but I'm sure that you, as one of the coordinators of this and the other folks who are helping to do this are getting excited by the use. Do you see yourself um, expanding in any way uh, with any products or with any, um, I, like more boxes or anything like that? Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm liking the idea of how Ryan's talking about having some different type of things, um, you know, kind of gets your, your wheels spinning, thinking about the different 
businesses in the community that you could work with the local farms. Um, obviously, Amanda, you know that I come from a farming family, but we're not, we don't, we don't have eggs. We don't have, you know, we don't here on my parents' farm have stuff that we could use for something like that, but there are certainly plenty of other farms around that maybe we could go that way. Um, I also like the idea of having some other non-food type items. Um, obviously, you know, right now it's hard to find a lot of that kind of stuff, but maybe that's something that we need to look at moving forward, um, not just during this pandemic, but something that we could do as we come out of that and that kind of stuff becomes more readily available. I, I really also like the fact that you've included some of those non-food items because I um, was involved in a project called the, the Homeless Period Project where they collect uh, feminine hygiene products and provide them to low or no income individuals, you know, schools for people who need them, um, homeless individuals. And then also um, we at our Mid-Atlantic Regional a couple of years ago collected those products, put them in bags and gave some to, you know, shelter and then some to our local police um, and other, you know, uh, social services, because sometimes whatever situation they're walking in on, they have to take someone out of a domestic abuse situation or something like that. They don't have those type of products if they're necessary. I mean, those aren't things that you can't sometimes get and they're actually not that <laughs> cheap. So I, I'm really glad to see that you guys, you know, included something like that. I think that's really interesting. Um, Ryan, I wanted to touch on something that you mentioned earlier and I hadn't hadn't really thought through this as a question, so bear with me, but you mentioned checking with your insurance um, and obviously you work with your town council, so you have a, an idea of any type of codes or restrictions that they have. Um, what, what was important to make sure that you guys checked on? Um, were there any kind of tips or, you know, notes that maybe your insurance agent or someone else gave you that um, might be helpful to formulate questions for, for Grange members who might be trying to do this in their own area, checking with their insurance? When we first brought up the idea of the food pantry at a Grange meeting, um, and we are fortunate in our Grange to have anywhere from 20 to 30 Grange members at a meeting. Um, there were naturally some concerns by some of the membership. Some of it was, um, well, what happens if they eat something that was bad in the food pantry and they could trace it back to us? Uh, what happens if there is vandalism? What happens if their animals do get in there? Um, what happens if something wipes out the food pantry, like a major storm comes through and it just totally destroys everything and our building gets damaged? Would that be covered under it? Uh, one of our members who was on our executive committee contacted our insurance agent and they reassured us as they have every single time. We have a very good insurance company, thank God, um, that basically said, if it's a project sponsored by the Grange, it is covered. So as long as we have the records in our minutes that say we voted to do this as a Grange sponsored project, it is covered regardless of what might happen. So those kinds of questions were put to rest and made many more people more comfortable just in case the Grange could have been held liable for something, some sort of unfortunate issue that we may have missed or may have been beyond our control uh, and that kind of thing. So we've been very lucky. So I assume that this is a general liability policy because oftentimes when you talk about national Grange, you know, the only thing that we deal with with Granges is the uh, bonding. Um, bonding obviously just covers, you know, embezzlement, and fiscal mismanagement and stuff like that. So it's not a bonding policy. It's a general liability policy. Yep. General liability policy that we have through Pagonis Insurance in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, one of our members of our executive committee actually knows the company, knows people who work there, and that's how we were able to secure a good policy for our Grange. And they cover us for everything. All of the events that we do here, it's all covered. Nice. So that's a good note for anybody who's um, thinking about doing anything like this. Um, Nicole, what tips or suggestions might you have for people who are considering doing this as questions they may want answers to uh, before walking into their meeting and suggesting that this be a project that they start? Um, you know, I think, like I said in the beginning, it just, for us, it was just a way of trying to think of what could we do to help in this these crazy times that we're in that nobody could have expected. 
Um, and just obviously we can't have meetings and we can't do all that kind of normal stuff that we're used to, but what could we possibly do right now that might be beneficial? And, um, you know, it just, you just try to think. And I, I thought, well, we've always done a food collection. Like I said, we've always, every meeting, we ask anybody that's able to bring what they can and we take it to the food bank. So it was, okay, well, the food bank still obviously needs donations as well, but how can we bring it closer to home? And in saying that, the food bank that we take our donations to is five minutes from our Grange Hall. But, you know, it's, we're in a little tiny town. It's not, you know, we're in, where it's not really even considered, it doesn't have its own zip code, that kind of thing. So we're not that far away. But again, just thinking, how can you make it accessible for those people that are here? that don't have a way to um, commute to an area where there is something. So just, you know, if, if there's something that you want to do that brings it close to home, um, that's what Grange is all about, supporting your community and being there to do what you can for them. Um, and, and especially in times of need, I think that's when this kind of stuff comes out. Uh, hopefully it's a project that we can continue even once we get through this. Hopefully the need is not, as big as it is right now but you know we don't know and that's what we're here for so just I mean that's how I kind of presented it what can we do and it's an inexpensive way to do it um, and it's not right now you know Grange is just like every other nonprofit organization we're not able to do the types of fundraisers that we're used to do it, be doing Ryan I know you said that you did your meal earlier today so if that kind of stuff yeah but you know I mean the things that we're used, used to being able to do and not even giving a thought and being a major income for us, we can't do. So this is still a way that we can help the community without, even though we haven't been able to have those fundraisers to help fund it because we can rely on our Grange members and other community members at this point to get us through it. Um, we have one or two comments or questions, so I'm just going to go through those and I'll remind you guys, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section here on Facebook and we will get to them. Um, Walcott Grange in Connecticut has had a little free library installed for several years that's been successful because they were able to work with uh, another organization to get a grant. And so um, while neither of yours had to be grant funded, that may be something of interest to individuals. And again, while that was a library project, um, there might be something out there for a pantry like this. Um, yeah, we actually have a little free library as well. We've had it for, um, you know, for me to tell you how many years I'm gonna be way wrong, but my guess would be probably around five years or so it was going around and we put it up just a small um, little hutch type piece that's out in our driveway. and. People can come and, you know, take a book home, read it, drop a book off if they have something that they're no longer using. We've had that for a while. So same kind of idea. And I do know that um, there is actually a project out there called the Little Free Pantry. Um, I, I didn't know that until after we had started doing ours. So I didn't look into doing it through that. You know, I don't know if there's licensing or any kind of stuff you have to sign up to do it that way. We just kind of did ours on our own. I looked into the little free pantry um, when we first talked about our little food pantry and we actually got ours registered through them. Doesn't require any paperwork, a little bit of an online form is all you have to do, but doesn't require money or licensing or anything like that. At least it gets it on their website. So if someone in their area is looking for one, yours can pop up as one of their little food pantries. That's and um, we don't have a little free library. Our Grange Hall is next door to our, our library. Uh, they just built a new library last year next door to our Grange Hall. So we don't have a little library, but we did just work with our town supervisor and her office to get a grant for our food pantry to keep it going. Um, should something happen with our financial donations, and we're waiting to hear back from that grant to see if we got it. That's awesome. It's really great that your community has stepped forward and said this is important and um, help support you in doing that grant writing process because I know that that can be kind of a bear. Um, I believe we had a question quick for you, uh, Ryan, which was, do you have internet to your Grange or in the area in the location? I'm not sure what the correlation is here, but um, I figure someone asked it, so I'll put it to you guys. Do you have internet in your Grange? At Stanford Grange in Dutchess County, we do have internet. 
Uh, that was another discussion we've had in the last year at our Grange because they were building the library next door. We have a very large youth group in our Grange that is that most of our officers are youth members, actually. Uh, some of them are high school age and college age. And uh, there, some of them would come to our Grange after school, after sports practice. They'd come right to the Grange Hall and they needed a place to do their homework. A lot of homework, even before the pandemic, was online materials, and we felt that for our youth members who are here, they need to have internet access to complete their homework. We've also started a uh, holiday craft fair a couple of years ago, and we had two of them so far, and a lot of our vendors weren't able to use credit cards to pay for things because we didn't have internet. It all had to be cash or check. So this year, again, after some discussion at a Grange meeting or a few Grange meetings and checking with everybody and all the proper, proper uh, people, we did have internet installed this winter at our Grange. So we do have internet here. Okay. And Nicole, do you have internet at your Grange? Again, I'm not entirely sure where the rest of the question goes, but. <laughs> no, we do not um, at this time. It, we're out far enough where um, there's not a lot of options for internet service. So it's just never been a need that we've had. Um, so we honestly, I don't, I don't believe that it's ever even been brought up of something that we would look into. We don't do any type craft fairs or anything like that where we would need it for that kind of purpose. Um, so right now we do not. Um, okay, so the other the part of this that I guess I wanted to ask you guys about because we talked about this a little before we got on um, was the relationship um, between your outreach of this food pantry and other times in which you do low or free, low cost or free meals. Um, so I know we've talked a little bit about that already. Uh, Nicole, you mentioned that you guys do a sub sale and I believe it's like $4 for a sub. Yeah, we are actually, we do $6 for the sub. Um, it's an eight inch sub, but it has way more meat on it than you could even imagine being able to eat. <laughs> um, so it's kind of just, we've done it. Um, I, I didn't look up the numbers beforehand, but I bet we've probably done it for 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, we have increased the price slightly since we started, but not drastically. And um, it, it's just people are always commenting, you know, you should be charging more than that for what you're putting on your sub. Sure. And any other low or um, no cost meals that you guys do uh, typically? There's no okay. others that we're doing right now at this point. Um, we do have a lot of other organizations that do them in our community, the fire companies. We have a ton of 4-H clubs around mm -hmm. and a lot of the local 4-H clubs do spaghetti dinners or breakfasts and stuff at the fire um, company that is, you know, five minutes from our hall. So we've batted the idea around a lot. Um, our, our Grange youth has talked about it a lot as a fundraiser for the youth. Um, just not something that we have pushed forward with as of yet. Okay. And Ryan, you mentioned obviously the free um, dinner that you all just held tonight with the spaghetti dinner, which, um, you know, it's free to the community, not free to you guys. Um, so do you have any other either fundraisers or um, low cost or free meals that you do um, as well? Yes, we do. Uh, for about 50 years or so, we've been having dinners for the community once a month and the topic of the dinner changes every month or the, the, the main meat of the dinner changes every month. Uh, this is done at a very low cost. It includes everything, your meal, your drink, your dessert, all under one price. It beats anything you can get at Red Lobster, Olive Garden, or anything like that. And it mostly caters to the senior citizens of our community. They like coming out for the socialization and seeing their friends and having a good meal for a good price. And at our dinners, we also have a bake sale raffle for our youth fund to help them pay for their activities, including going to National Grange conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, the money from the bake sale raffles there goes to the kids. So they can buy a chance for a dollar or six for five and that kind of thing. And, and they can win some homemade baked goods to take home mm -hmm. from the dinner. Uh, so we do have several of those dinners, usually about 10 a year. We take the summer off because we're busy with our county fair and other activities going on in our area. Kids go on vacation during the summer and we want to go on vacation too sometimes. So uh, we don't usually do dinners in the summer, but we usually do them the other 10 months out of the year once a month. We actually have our next dinner coming up on Saturday of this week, Saturday, May 16th. We're having a meatloaf dinner 
and the total proceeds of that is going to go towards our scholarships for our graduating seniors. Yes. And luckily, um, our Grange Hall is certified through the Dutchess County Department of Health. So to them, we're considered a restaurant and they have to come and do water checks and food safety checks and all of the things that they would do in a restaurant. They got to come and do it to us too. So that's how we got the green light to do these dinners both today and the one on Saturday during this pandemic this is because they think we're a restaurant, which is totally fine with us. We can still help the community if we're a restaurant. Absolutely. We had um, someone ask a question and I think I'm going to qualify it. Just say that uh, I'll let you guys answer for your states and your counties because this is so specific. Um, but what is the rule with doing a takeout meal and how many Grange members can be present with the current pandemic? So I'll start by saying, obviously, this is something that you have to check at your almost most local of level. You almost need to call your, your town council or your county commissioners or something because it's so different. Um, some states have left it to the whole state. And the governor makes that decision. Some states, it's down to the county level. Some, it's down to the town level. So um, I'll ask you each for your area um, right now, where are you guys with having in-person events and especially if they're food specific? In Dutchess County, New York, we are, like I said, certified through the Dutchess County Department of Health and all restaurants have to be certified through their county departments of health. The state doesn't need to be involved, at least down by us in Dutchess County, they don't need to be involved. Um, but we do have water testing that's done quarterly to test our water, our well, to make sure everything's okay. They come to do food checks. They come to inspect the hall. The building inspector comes to inspect the building to make sure everything is sound. Um, and that's how we are able to do a lot of these activities. How many people did you have tonight helping you? Tonight we had six members. Uh, that's the limit we're allowed to have is six. All of our members wore face masks the entire time. We wore gloves, obviously you need to wear gloves for food service. And since we had the masks on, we were kind of relaxed with the social distancing with six feet apart. We know it's very difficult to do in any situation where there's more than just you in a room. So um, the face masks helped us, but we did try to stay six feet apart as best we could. And Nicole, um, I mean, you're not doing any food service. You're, you're not doing your sub sale or anything right now, but what's, what's Maryland doing uh, right now with? Right now we're, um, Maryland is still in the stay at home mode. So we're not really doing anything. Um, I'm not sure how that would be. Um, you know, no gatherings over 10 people, obviously, but I don't know how that would be if um, if we were to try to do something like that. Since we haven't tried to do anything, we haven't really you know looked into any of the details on that. Yeah, and I think that's fair. And I honestly, um, the one thing I think that uh, Master Betsy Hubert said a couple weeks ago, or I guess it's about two weeks ago now when she was on, um, she mentioned that even if your state or your county or your locality gets the green light to go ahead and kind of go back to normal, there's still going to be a lot of folks for one reason or another who are not going to go back to normal. Uh, many in our Grange community, our Grange family, because they're at higher risk, um, you know, for, for contracting something. And so, um, you know, having some of these restrictions in place uh, may continue just because we want to keep our Grange family safe, even if the state or the locality doesn't require face masks or something like that. Um, also, you know, understanding that some of those folks won't come out for things, um, you know, so maybe not, not trying to jump too quickly into it because you may not have the same, uh, you know, same assistance or whatever that you normally do. I think that's kind of an important thing to, to look at. So um, I just wanted to mention a couple comments. One of our, our members said that they're fortunate at their hall to have enough property to be able to have their own food garden, a uh, small garden, and they donate to their local senior center of food pantry, uh, all of the produce that they grow. Um, so that's interesting. I know Ryan, you're in the middle of a town. You probably couldn't do that. Nicole, I'm not ent entirely sure that you could do that at your hall either. Um, yeah, I don't really know that we have the space to do that right now. Um, I mean, you know, we have the hall, we have a little tiny bit of room out in front, and then behind the hall is our parking area. So we don't really have anything that we would have the ability to do that right where we are. That is an interesting idea for any anyone who has a hall with property like that. Or, you know, if, if your Grange is friends with, uh, you know, Nicole's parents and says, can we take a, you know, small parcel, you know, 40 by 60 
foot plot or something and, and turn it into a garden. You have lots of creative ways you can you can do this um, feeding of the, the fatherless and the widows, or let's just call it feeding those in need. Um, in our then, range, we can't have, we don't have room for a garden either because we sponsor our town's community day, and the front lawn of the Grange is filled with tents of organizations and vendors and that kind of thing for our town's community day. But we actually just partnered with our Lions Club before that, literally the meeting before the pandemic happened, to start a community garden in our town run by our Lions Club and the Grange volunteered to help with that project. So once this whole thing is over, we're looking forward to starting that project with our Lions Club. Awesome. Um, one of the other questions someone had was how many members do you guys have? And I think that's an important question because a lot of times people feel like I've got 13 members. We are all stressed to the max. Uh, we, we don't possibly have enough people to cover this. So how many members do you have in the roles? And then I'm going to ask how many active members you have people who you can count on to come out and do things. And look, there's nothing wrong with having folks who are members that aren't active. There's, there's nothing wrong with it because they help us get to the end goal of these projects sometimes. So uh, Nicole, how many members does Linganore have and how many active members do you have? Um, you know, I should like call my lifeline out here in the other room because I'm <laughs> not, okay. not sure. I want to say that I believe the numbers were around 80 on the rolls. Um, hopefully I'm not way off on that. But um, we, I think Ryan mentioned earlier, usually between 20 and 30, probably most of the time between 25 and 30 members that we have at a Grange meeting. Occasionally we do have a few more than that. Um, but those would be the, the very active members that are there almost every meeting um, and that come out for all of our fundraisers, all of our other types of events that, you know, we have going on. Nice. Ryan? At Stanford Grange, we have 104 members in our Grange on the rolls. And like I said earlier, about 20 to 30 come to a Grange meeting every time. I'd say active members, at least half are active in some way, shape or form, whether they help with a dinner or they help with the food pantry or they come to meetings and they serve at an office or they help with our county fair with the snack bar there or our Grange exhibits. Um, community day, sometimes only members at community day, but they're there always to help with our chicken barbecue. And that's their job. That's what they love to do. So um, we have about, I'd say half of our membership is active in some way, shape or form. And I think that's, it's nice to see two big vibrant granges. I would consider you guys bigger granges um, because looking at, you know, the dispersion of how many people, uh, a lot of granges have, a lot of them have, you know, 20. 25 folks um, for, for one reason or another. You guys have 20 or 25 showing up to your meetings. So um, that's an, a really nice number of people who you can count on and divvy responsibilities out to so someone doesn't get burned out. Um, but I think if you are a, maybe an older oriented Grange um, only with a few members and you find folks who are really excited about the opportunity to do something, give back in their community at this time, especially um, adding them to your roles right now may be the perfect time because you're able to capitalize on that want uh, to do uh, and the, the ability for them to see immediate impact in what they're doing to serve others. Um, and I think that this is a fantastic way to do that. Uh, I love Nicole that you said that, you know, you guys, just built something. We've got lots of handy folks in the Grange who can build. Ryan, I love that you guys found and repurposed furniture. And these aren't hard ways to go about filling this need. And coming back, I think, to see um, a cabinet that's been used, you know, a cabinet that's half empty or, or whatever, that shows somebody they've immediately made an impact in someone's life. Um, that kind of leads me to my last two questions for you guys. Um, and that is, what have you been hearing from your members about this project? So let me start with you, Nicole. Um, everybody that we've talked to so far loves the idea. Um, again, just trying to share it and get it out there. Um, Cause I think that's one of the biggest challenges, you know, you want to do something like that, but how do you get it out there so that the members in the community that need it know that it's there? Um, we do have a small sign at our entrance to the building. So we did, I think I mentioned earlier, put it on there that there's a food pantry on the porch and to please help yourself. Um, and trying to share it on Facebook as much as you can and in some of the community groups, but just knowing how to spread the word and make sure that people are aware. Um, everybody's been loving the idea so far. 
um, asking, you know, how can we help or what do we need to put in it? What kind of stuff is moving and um, what's not so that, you know, we can best spend the monies that people are willing to donate in food. Um, so it, it's been a, a very, a very um, well received at this point. Nice. Brian, how about you? We, our members have said this has been a great idea since day one, even those who were kind of cautious in the beginning regarding the insurance have said this is a great idea because our community doesn't have a food pantry. So they love the idea and they support the idea 100%. The best comments we have are from people who post on our Facebook page and that's how we advertise also is on our Facebook page or people we see in person. Uh, nine times out of 10, we're not here when people come to get food. It's accessible on our porch. But if we are here, people have called us angels. People have called us saints. And we're just like, no, we're not. We're just common everyday people helping other people. And that's our mission here in our town is try to help our fellow members of our community and to create community unity with our other organizations and businesses and our town board. Uh, so the overwhelming response for our food pantry has been very, very positive and it's really made us very humble. And then I'm going to ask you too a little bit about, um, have you gotten any attention? Uh, you know, you mentioned Ryan that yours is mentioned in your town newsletter um, now each time. Um, so any, any attention from other groups that have mentioned the Grange because of your project, uh, your town board, press, whomever, um, or, you know, has this kind of flown under the radar so far or have you noticed even like the uptick in people who like maybe your Facebook page or people who uh, interact with you in social media Nicole? Um, I don't know that uh, we've really noticed much of a change. We do have a local Facebook page. A lot of the sharing of this information has, I mean we're obviously putting it on our page but has been a lot of our members sharing it um, which I think is a really good way to get it out there because you know your members share it and then a lot of their friends see it and they share it again. So I've noticed a lot of that other members in our community that aren't Grange members picking up on the posts and sharing it for their friends to see. And then, you know, I mean, who knows where it goes from there, how many more people are sharing it and who else is seeing it. Uh, I have not directly had any communication with any other organizations or, um, you know, town council or anything like that asking about it or um, any, anything at this point, I don't, have not been made aware of anyone else in our Grange being reached out um, to by anybody else either, but that's not to say that it could have possibly happened. Right. And also yours is a little bit newer, yeah. um, you know, than, than Ryan's. They have a couple more months under their belt. So Ryan, you mentioned that it's been in your town newsletter. Obviously you guys are sharing it. Have you seen more likes on your Facebook page? Have you uh, had more people recognize what the Grange is or, or what it's doing? Absolutely. The number of likes, the number of people who follow our Facebook page has grown exponentially since this pandemic started and we opened our food pantry. Um, we get more and more likes on there every day. Uh, whenever we post something, it's, it's you know, 50 to 100 likes for whatever we post. Um, we also work with other organizations. Like I said, it's on our town supervisor's newsletter. She also put it on our town website. So there is a page there for us to solicit donations. Also, uh, our Alliance Club has donated to us. Our fire company has donated three times to us so far with donations for the, the food pantry. Um, and then word of mouth really is the best way to spread about the food pantry uh, for people to know about it being behind our grain hall and what we need. And people are constantly asking us either in person or on the Facebook page, you know, what do you need? And we're always glad to respond. And they, we have very diligent members of our community who keep us supplied with money and donations. So like I said, we live in a very fortunate community, a very giving community, and that's helped us out a lot. Um, and the last thing I guess that ties into both of those is, um, you know, do you have any new member, newer members uh, who were newer to your Grange before you guys put that in, who have really kind of seen seen and believed out of this, you know, know now what Grange can do? Um, or do you have anyone inquiring about membership? That was a question that I'm, I'm taking. So I'll, uh, I'll send that one to you, Nicole, first. Um, at this point, no. Um, we, again, we haven't had a meeting. Um, we're working on setting up our online conference call Zoom meeting for next week. So, um, you know, I mean, there's plenty of us that 
talk back and forth during the week, throughout the week, text, whatever, to keep each other updated on projects like this and um, communicating what we need and, you know, how it's going and how it's being used and when it needs something or when it's okay. But the um, membership as a whole hasn't heard a whole lot about it since we haven't been able to do something. So hopefully once we can do a meeting next week, um, fingers crossed, <laughs> that you know we can get it out there a little bit more and then um, even get more members on board about it and you know willing to do whatever it is to help support this project and maybe be able to grow it into something more like what you guys are doing Ryan. Ryan how about you do you have any newer members who really kind of oh wow now I get why I joined the Grange out of this? Yes, uh, our food pantry right now with the pandemic is really coordinated by four of our members who are here every day checking, making sure it's restocked, making sure we have what we need, taking the donations and checking the dates, making sure they're not expired. Um, one of our members is on our executive committee and he is a newer member and he has really taken to the Grange because of this. He joined because he was in the Lions Club. Several Grange members joined the Lions and he is a Lions member joined the Grange in return but now this has become his project and he's here several times a day, checking the food pantry, checking the donations, talking to people, uh, making sure it's cleaned, it's organized, it's stocked, it's disinfected. Um, and it really has helped him out. Um, and it's, it's, he's become one of our very, very good friends that uh, we all have now because of the food pantry. And actually at our, our meeting, we have a virtual meeting on Tuesday night. We are going to vote in another new member Tuesday night um, because of the food pantry. So we're hoping to get some more members because of it, but we're, we want to be very careful though. We don't want to put membership applications out there. You know, if people are, are needing food from our food pantry for free, they probably don't have the, the money for a Grange membership. So we're very careful not to, to push joining the Grange with our food pantry. It's there to help the community at large if they need it. And if someone requests information about it, then certainly we're glad to give them whatever information they need. That makes sense. Um, I just want to mention that, you know, after reading kind of through some of the comments, um, you know, if you've got someone who's come to your range, like you're waiting to, you know, have a vote and, and bring someone in, but maybe you don't have a meeting set. Um, maybe you're kind of in this weird uh, position where, you know, you haven't had a meeting or you just had one and you've got a month to go. Um, people right now are activated to do now and especially younger people who are, um, you know, we kind of expect some instant gratification. So if I'm looking to make a difference, I'm looking to make a difference today. Um, don't wait to put those people to work. Um, if you expect that they're going to be members, I mean, if you're just waiting to do a welcoming ceremony with them, if you're just waiting for the formalities, you know, get them involved. Uh, tell your members, hey, you guys that are doing the food pantry, um, Jenny wants to join, you know, sh we'll, we'll have her in at the next meeting, but she wants to help now um, because asking someone to sit on the sidelines and wait is basically turning them away. What do you guys think? Agreed. Yeah. Yes, a hundred percent agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we hope that you guys learned something here and, and have some ideas about what else you could do as projects. Um, we hope that both of you are putting in uh, this project uh, for the grant application uh, through the foundation. Uh, I'll remind you that June 5th is a deadline for the Grange Foundation grants. Um, there, will, there will be 10 given, $100 each. I know that's very little to go uh, around, and I know that that's little in compared to what you guys have put into these food pantries, but um, it's still exciting to be able to offer the opportunity to give you guys the grants, and so I hope that you will be doing that. Some of the other uh, folks who have mentioned different things that they're doing, um, you know, if you've had a little free library there and you've made sure to advertise it recently to say if you're bored uh, and you need something to do at this time, as long as you've, you've pushed that as a service project during this time, that's, you're eligible. So please uh, make sure to look for those um, grant applications on grangefoundation.org. I look forward to getting both of yours. Um, and I thank you guys so much for coming on here. I don't know if there's anything else you guys wanted to add, so um, I'll let you do that this point if you'd like. Thanks for having us, Amanda. We really appreciate this and all the work that you're doing through the National Grange to give us something to do while we're stuck at home. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. Um, it's been 
something that's kept our Grange motivated, kept us going, and we look forward to seeing what you're offering. So we look forward to the date nights and the trivia nights and all the, the informational sessions you have. So thank you very much, Amanda, for what you do. Hey, thank you very much. And remember, invite all those non-Grange friends that you have. They might really get hooked on us. We uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, you guys helped hook my friend, Susan, on the Grange. She'll be joining us. Uh, she was with us for day, uh, Friday night's trivia night. So, Nicole, anything you want? I'd like to echo what Ryan said. Thank you, Amanda, and everybody at National Grange for everything that you're doing. Um, hopefully this craziness doesn't last forever. Um, and we can start getting back to doing some more of the work that we're used to doing. I know things won't go back to what was normal for us before, um, I'm sure for quite some time, but hopefully we can, you know, soon get things moving back a little bit more. Um, but glad that we could do these little projects in the meantime to help service the community. You guys are doing awesome work, um, keeping the Grange, you know, in the forefront of your members' minds, but also keeping um, the Grange image, you know, up in your community. So we really appreciate that as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to send them to me and I can send them on to our participants as always. And um, hopefully you all stay safe, stay well, wash your hands. Yeah, thank you.